Now, as we come off of the hurdle, of course, the most important things are that we get back on the ground as quickly as possible and that we maintain our nice running rhythm as we run off of the hurdle. Now, this is achieved primarily by maintaining a nice high hip position. As we land off the hurdle, if we keep our hip nice and high, it helps us to step down with our lead leg faster and closer to the hurdle and to create that stiffness on contact. The last thing we want to do is to land with a soft, low hip so that our trail leg is going to swing in and forward of the body, creating this braking effect and our feet are going to get stuck behind us where we can't attack the ground between the hurdles. So we want to land with a nice high hip position, creating stiffness on landing that allows us to pull that trail leg through to a nice high position, ready to run onto the next hurdle. Now, in order to create this strength and stiffness on landing, we need to get the timing of that lead leg right. So as soon as our foot begins to clear the hurdle, we're aiming to pull that foot down under the hurdle, almost trying to pull our hamstring across the hurdle barrier. And as we do, our hips are gonna move across the hurdle and we'll find that foot landing directly under our hips. Now at this point, we should still have our chest attacking the hurdle. So we're gonna land with the foot under the hip, our chest slightly forward, counterbalancing what our trail leg is doing. And then as we pull that trail leg through, we're gonna bring that chest up into our neutral position and we'll find ourselves in that upright position with our nice high knee position of the trail leg. So the trail leg, the lead leg is landing under the hips with our chest pressed forwards and the right time to pull the chest up into our neutral position is as we pull that trail leg through and under the hips and we'll see it bring us to this nice high position with our nice high knee position. Now this trail leg is going to pull through to a high knee position but remember our aim is to get back onto the ground to keep our rhythm and to get back to running as soon as possible. So we're not going to necessarily think about pulling this trail leg through to a high knee position. Rather, we're gonna think about having an up-down motion of the trail leg, where we pull it up into our armpit and down onto the ground. So this way, we're using that trail leg as an active stride into the next hurdle. So we're using the trail leg to inject speed into the run, but also in being an active trail leg, it's gonna help us create stiffness and that maintain that high hip position that we're looking for. What we don't want to do is pull that trail leg through to a high position, allow it to swing ahead of the body, or even worse, to swing across the body and passively land on the ground and lose our positions. We're looking for it to come up into the armpit and then to actively strike the ground to accelerate us into the next hurdle. So this is how we use the lead and trail leg on landing to create that stiffness we need and to maintain that posture we need into the next hurdle. But it's also how we get that nice tidy landing on the other side of the hurdle. Remember, we want two thirds of our work to be done on this side of the hurdle and only a third of our work to be done on this side. And having that active pull down of the lead leg after the hurdle and then an active strike under the hips of the trail leg, we can get our feet to land in a one-two action on the other side of the hurdle and create all the space we need to run onto the next hurdle. So one of the best drills for practicing this one-two landing and the use of the trail leg is using the one stride hurling drill, where not only are we clearing the hurdle and having to get down quickly to fit in the space, but we also have to use that trail leg to propel us over the next hurdle. So it's a great way of having strong landing mechanics and a really active trail leg that propels us forwards down the track.